What's up guys and welcome to a brand new video. So today I'm going to be running through my top 10 tips and tricks to become a better Battlelands player. So I'd really appreciate it if you would smash the like button on this video. Let's see if we can beat 1,500 likes. Now if we can, I would love to hear what skin you would like me to give away next. But let me know down in the comments guys. So without further ado, let's get into this. As we're going through the video, I want you guys to drop a comment with any tips and tricks you have for other players in Battlelands. Let's try and make this video an encyclopedia of knowledge. Number one, use the bot or lag trick. Now, I've actually had some fun with this recently. If somebody's trying to hide from you, maybe in a building or they're trying to escape, just pretending you're a bot or pretending that you're lagging out can uh, actually give you a free kill. I had a guy who wouldn't face me, so I just ran into the wall repeatedly. He obviously thought I'd lagged out or maybe I was a bot or maybe he just got curious. You can then just whip out a shotgun and three shells later, the fight is over. Number two. Now, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but since the last update, the square gun icon completely blocks out what is happening behind there. So the three different blocks, they actually block out a large portion of the screen. Now, people with small devices, it can be really tricky to try and aim at someone that you can't even see. So try and learn how to position yourself in a gunfight so that you're covered by the gun graphic. Number three. Utilize the switch and juke shotgun technique. Now this can actually be used on the shotgun, on the double barrel and pretty much on any gun but it works best on those two shotguns. Now this is a technique that I would say a lot of players know by now. The game's been out for over a year but there's many players that don't know this or they don't actually understand how to execute it. So this is exactly how to do this technique guys. So when you're close to an opponent and you want to shoot one shot off and immediately release your right hand from the trigger and then immediately with your left thumb you want to move your player to a different angle then with your right hand you take the shot again and then you rinse and repeat and uh, if you do this right you can literally run a circle around someone with three shots in one second and they're on the floor without even knowing what has happened so this is a great technique it'll really enhance your gameplay and uh, it's definitely worth learning so do you know how to do the shotgun technique let me know down in the comments guys i'm curious to know how many of you players have managed to master this number four Save your Tursk. If you get into a fight with a fast moving storm circle coming in, that extra speed could leave your opponent in the red. You could then track their progress and uh, predict how low on health they may be. It's also good to save for bazooka or quadzooka fights as that is when you need the speed of movement. And the other consumables, they help you with health, they help you with armor, but this is the only one that changes your movement. So uh, the Tursk is the most important one in the game and it's definitely worth picking the right moment for it. Number five. Memorize the map health pads. Sometimes after a big fight, there can be multiple health pads just left lying there. I've got into loads of fights where I've had to run away, track back, and then be able to regain health by memorizing the location of the health pads. You can then have the upper hand in the fight because uh, you always have another option. You're never gonna be cornered because there's always somewhere else you can go to get some more health. I also recommend you guys get into the habit of running in circles when picking up health pads. If you're in a gunfight and on low HP, if you can dodge all of their shots while picking up a health pad, you will then be the one in the driving seat. I've had people chase me from one side of the map to the other. I've then been able to run in circles, pick up the health pad, and all of a sudden I am then the aggressor because I've got full health, they've got half health or less than half, and uh, the tables will have turned. Number six, if you are low on ammo, Pick up a new weapon before picking up ammo. Now this is uh, such an underrated thing, but I still see so many people making this mistake. So for example, if you finish the fight, if you pick up the ammo first, then pick up the new weapon, you're just harming yourself and are not taking away the maximum ammo from the situation. Now I'm curious, is this something that you guys do yourselves? Because uh, I don't actually see many players doing this. Even my teammates will usually just pick up ammo. They don't really care about picking up the gun first. Number seven, in duos and squads, Focus your fire on one opponent. Now it can be tempting to shoot everybody you see, but if you can focus your fire primarily on the person with the best weapon, or even the player that looks the most skillful, an example could be someone with a gold scar, or someone who clearly has quick movement, or even looks like they have a high level or rare skin, target your fire on that person, get them knocked down first. This will mean their teammates go to try and revive them, and this basically anchors them into that spot. They cannot move because they want to res their teammate, and for you and your squad or your duo, this will 
assuming they're easy pickings to finish them off. You'll immediately have the upper hand because you have the freedom of movement. Your squad could then circle those players that are resing. This is why you might see often in my videos, when I have a sniper, I will focus nearly all of my shots on one enemy. You can also use your opponent's fallen teammates as a meat shield, so you can take down the other opponents, or even use your own teammates who have fallen, because when your own teammates have fallen, they can take a high amount of damage, much higher than when you're standing up. And it can also be a great way to bait your opponent into unloading all of their ammo. Number 8. Sometimes it pays to be smart and put your gun away. So say you get into a fight with someone with an SMG and you have a sniper, but you're at short range or you're trapped inside a building, it can be really tricky to aim with a sniper due to the small hitbox of the bullet damage. So putting your gun away and using fists can be the quicker kill. Each punch does 15 damage and that can be quicker than waiting to land 3 or 4 sniper shots if you're at short range. Number 9. Run with your melee weapon out. If you want to bait fights, make them think that you have no weapon. This can also work in dogfights with multiple opponents. Take a shot, then switch your weapon out and they might think that you're actually out of bullets. This works best with short range weapons, so this is a really helpful tip because uh, a big part of Basswellands is making your opponents think something else. So uh, many of the tips in this video are going to focus on ways that you can manipulate your opponent. Number 10. Play to the strengths of your current weapon. If you're stuck in a large open space with a shotgun, you don't want to get into a fight with a sniper. You should just probably leave, it's not even worth your time. If I'm playing a shotgun game, I usually try and stay as close as possible to all the little obstacles on the map. So mapping your path through the terrain means if you get into a surprise fight, you'll have the best chance of coming out on top. The same can be said for long range weapons. Avoid going into suspicious houses or grass with a sniper. You'll be the most vulnerable and uh, can get instantly taken out by a shotgun or double barrel. So the general rule is if you have a short range weapon, Avoid open spaces and with a long range weapon, avoid enclosed spaces. Now guys, I talk a lot about the shotgun because it's probably my favourite weapon. But uh, what's your favourite weapon in Battlelands right now? So uh, drop a comment guys, what is your favourite weapon in Battlelands? Now this one seems pretty obvious, but I see lots of people not doing this. When you have downed somebody, as long as there is no immediate threat, use your melee weapon or just punch to finish them off. Now I'm a kill hungry player and when I get someone knocked, I want to finish them off immediately. So don't waste your bullets, use your melee weapon, save your ammo for when their teammates come and try and find you. Pick up as many weapons as possible. The way I see it, every time you pick up a gun, that's one less weapon for your opponents to pick up. So this is best used for duplicate weapons. If you have a scar, just pick up every scar you see, and then you'll be the only one around who actually has one. Remember, you don't know where the final circle is going to be, so by taking the weapons, you're limiting the options for your opponents, and uh, they might be forced to pick up less than desirable weapons like the SMG. Try to land in populated areas. Now this is actually one of my best tips and I advise every single player to do this. I always try to land where there's going to be the most people and the biggest fights. And this has kind of been my attitude since day one and it's really paid off. You know, too many players try to avoid fights and I think that mentality will not help you out in the long run with this game. I first got into Battlelands when I was watching Nick Merckx on Twitch and uh, he would just land in the same place over and over again in Fortnite and try and beat the kills of his teammates. Now it's pretty much the same in most games but the more fights you get into, the more more experience in combat you're going to get which is going to make you a better player. So yeah, my advice is to land in the most populated areas, get into fights and uh, actually one of the best ways to do this is to either play squads or some of the new game modes. Like when the bazooka mode came out, I found that after a few days of only playing bazooka party, I was already so much better with the bazooka than I was before. So uh, if you do the beach fight, you'll probably get good at melee weapons and uh, the same can be said for hot drop as well. I found that I got really good with miniguns after playing that for a couple of days. And it's also worth bearing in mind guys, it can also teach you what you can get away with. Like sometimes I'm completely shocked when I win a fight, you know, with no health or in a clutch situation that you really shouldn't win. And it gives you confidence that next time you're faced with a similar situation, you won't run and hide. So what do you guys think? What's your play style? Are you an aggressive player like me? I would definitely recommend you don't camp at all costs. It's just a waste of time. But having said that, they can be good times to show restraint and pick your moments to fight. So there we go guys, if you found this video helpful, please smash the like button and uh, share it with all the other Battlelands players you know. Let's try and hit 1,500 likes on this video. If you would like to see a brand new skin giveaway, so uh, don't forget to let me know what skin you would like that to be. Also guys, don't forget to share your tips via the comments section. Like I said, let's make this an encyclopedia of knowledge so that all players can try and improve. I do hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks in this video and I'll catch you soon for more Battlelands videos. Yeah!